men are very well aware of the state of dating today. Women look at jobs as just a stepping stone to getting money. You come from nothing. Oops, woman got the job. Now it's an actual problem. So we have a video here from Bayudo. The mating crisis. Why the dating market is doomed. We just went into that. Something bad is beginning to unfold in economically developed nations. No, no, no. It's, it's something's already unfolding for the previous like seven, ten years. The more that I think about this, the more I feel like we might be totally fucked. Young men are abandoning colleges at a rapid rate. An NYU professor says fewer men going to college will lead to a mating crisis with the U.S. producing too many broke and alone men. This is really not Blame good men. for society. Like it or not, a four-year college degree is required for entry to the upper echelon of America. Women with college degrees don't want to partner with men who don't have a college degree. The mating inequality that's going to come out of this dearth of men in college poses an existential risk to our economy and our society. It's a matter of national security. And like everything else in this country, we're not going to deal with it until it becomes essentially unfixable. We only throw money at a problem once it becomes absolutely dire. When there's nothing else to be done. When we've already exhausted every other option possible. Everything available to us. We could already be battling this problem. We could be using preventative measures. We could be doing something. Nope. We don't care about that. We'll deal with the problem when it's metastasized into like a stage four cancer that will absolutely rip apart society. Then we'll deal with it. Once Doob's Day rolls along, then we'll deal with it. Oh, the aliens have arrived? Independence Day style? Blowing up cities? We'll deal with it then. Society collapsing? The family unit vanishing? Men checking out in the worst ways possible, either turning into hermits in their rooms, going into the digital realm, or going abroad? Okay. Once they see the statistics, and they're already pointed in the wrong direction, once the statistics get dire, when there's like 20% of men going to college, when a vast majority of women are unwed, have no kids, once they see the birth rates plummet, then they'll go, I think uh, I think we should do something about this, guys. I think maybe we should bring up men and uh, make max masculinity a positive, a positive thing in society again. I think we should change the narrative about men bad. Man bad. Masculinity. Bad. Man predator. Man evil. Man reason for problem. <laughs> Apes. Don't wait until it's too late. As women continue to excel in education and the workplace alike, an ever-increasing number of the male population are withdrawing. In the last 10 years, the number of men between the ages of 18 and 30 reporting no sex in the last year Thanks, brother. has tripled. And the worrying thing is that this could so easily lead to a violent storm. The most dangerous person in the world is a broke and a lone male. And we are producing too many of them. The future for relationships between men and women. If you don't think that's true, how many public tragedies are now unfolding in America week after week after week? Women is starting to look bleak. If men don't kill themselves, they're exiting education and society and family life at the highest rates ever. Women are frantically pursuing careers only to discover that they're unable to find a partner that they're attracted to and then jump on meds at 40 years old. And then the people who want kids can't f And it's not even finding a partner you're attracted to. It's just finding a partner, period, that's attracted to you. It's not about finding a partner you're attracted to. It's finding someone that actually wants you at 40 versus you at 20. Let's be real. Again, women are qualifying themselves like they're men to men. I make this much. I have this degree. I have this plaque on the wall. Nobody gives a shit. Are you good with kids? Are you feminine? Are you nurturing? Are you the safe place? Can I come home and feel happy? Is there a meal cooked? I deal with enough shit in the world. Can I come home to fucking positive energy? Can I rest my shoulders when I get home? Can I just relax? Can I take the armor off? Can I feel safe? Am I coming to my castle? Not a damn word about that all we hear about is how much money you make what you got going on i don't care about any of that shit moving on oh we're gonna fight about the toilet seat being up oh really i gotta come home and battle you now on top of the battles i have out there in the real world i gotta come home and deal with more shit walk on eggshells F off later a lot of men are saying that's not even worth dealing with Birth rates declining faith in the leaders and the news organizations non-existent and everyone's just about sufficiently sedated not to notice or care that it's going on that's a precise and accurate summary. People have noticed they are caring and people are sedated as well. That's true. But it's not that. Yeah, it's not that people don't care. But people are very well aware. Men are very well aware of the state of dating today. Men have been complaining about dating today. Men have been 
calling out the issues, the imbalances in dating today. Trust me, man, it's women that are finally starting to learn and it's becoming mainstream because now the female voice has interjected itself into the quote, call it, what do you want to call it? Red pill, manosphere, whatever. Now women are finally talking about the insanity going on. Dude, men have been talking about this shit 10 years ago, 15 years ago. It's just now coming ahead to everybody else in the mainstream. Now people want to worry. We've been talking about this. We've been saying we don't want masculine women. This boss babe shit they're pushing in the mainstream narrative, not interested. Now, I told you, like I told you guys last year, 2023 will be the year past where bro starts getting shamed. Ain't that some shit? What's happening now? It's 2023. We're not even f***ing over with February, dude. It's full steam ahead on the shaming language for men using a passport to just free themselves. I appreciate you guys super chatting, dude. Thank you, Pac. Love you guys. How the West has declined and will collapse, yes. Mm -hmm. How did we arrive at this point? Go back to the in the not too real distant real past, marriage preceded sex, and young women were sold by their families to eligible men of equal or superior social status. These young women had little say in the matter, and once they were married, they remained dependent on their husband's earnings until they died. The lives of both men and women were extremely tough. Most men suffered grueling days in the fields, earning very little money, and most women suffered grueling days in the home, earning no money. Women tended to their children, but also to domestic duties, which back then were far more difficult and time-consuming. The technologies we take for granted today, like the vacuum cleaner, electric washing machine, dishwasher, and so on, had yet to come to humanity's aid. Even when the Industrial Revolution was in full swing, many households, especially those in rural areas, still didn't have running tap water. But everything changed in the 20th century. In the United States, the 19th Amendment to the Constitution, ratified in the year of 1920, permitted women the right to vote, and a series of technological advancements followed, which began to turn the tide. Chief among these developments were the electric washing machine and the birth control Ooh. pill. The introduction of the pill Bruh. caused a tremendous social shift. Unmarried women were able to have sex without getting pregnant, which is enormously significant because you didn't have to get married to have sex, <laughs> or you didn't have to risk an abortion. Control over the reproductive process in particular meant that women were free to pursue educational and economic success for the first time in history. Son of a bitch! We struck the mother low. Marriage became a matter of choice as opposed to a social or economic necessity. By 1970, 50% of single women and 40 And and dude, we can't even have a real conversation about comp competition and competitiveness. Most men can do the jobs women claim they're doing at and do it like without having a life, without having a balance, without giving a shit about anything. A man can engross himself, derive value from a job. Women look at jobs as just a stepping stone to getting money. A man can wrap his identity in the job. This is why, this is why we have to force women in the door with diversity and inclusion. Starting a family, all that shit, work-life balance. Women care about all that shit way more than men. A dude will be happy slaving away at work, crushing everybody else. He wants to be on the top of the leaderboard. Doesn't give a shit. Whose name is on top? Who's the top salesman this month? Better be my name. Oh, looks like I got to work extra hours. Don't give a f As long as Ted from the office, he ain't beating me. Oh, me and Ted got a... We have a bet. 500 bucks at the end of the month. Who does the best? Employee of the month. Who's plaque on the wall? Who's more vicious to get the promotion? Men love that. Men thrive in that environment. M women don't. Women crumble in environments like that. Most of them do. Not all, because there always is an exception to the rule. There are some cold women, type A types, that love and thrive in competition. That's not normal. Just like there's some very soft, effeminate men that cry their hearts out and are really good at nurturing and with people and shit. Those men exist, but they're not normal men. Yet society is trying to tune the average woman in the direction of a competitive male. And a lot of them are unhappy. And we're trying to act like, but you should be. You mean you're not happy slaving away at work like a man would? You mean you're not happy chasing medals, chasing recognition, chasing achievement like a man is? You mean the plaque on the wall and all that shit doesn't, derive, doesn't make you deeply satisfied in life? You mean like having a kid would, like a baby? There's something wrong with you, sis. You've internalized misogyny somehow. How could you not be happy being a wage cuck and having the IRS take most of your earnings? Unreal, dude. It's like common sense is lacking in this country. We can't see that we're different. A lot of men struggle with um, identity if fired from a job. 
they love, but it's less likely for a woman to have the same struggle. Thanks, Ryan. And that's true. Yeah. 80% of married women were participating in the labor force, and 1981 was the last year that more men than women graduated from a four-year undergraduate program. Now, 60 years after the release of the birth control pill, young women are steaming ahead. In the UK, Lucas. women Thank in their you, 20s earn, on average, 1,100 more per annum than guys. their male counterparts, and they're doing way better than men on the educational front. What's happened is that males have fallen rapidly behind females at every stage of the education system and in every advanced economy in the world. On pretty much every measure you can look at, girls are ahead of boys, and that's increasingly true even in subjects like math and science. Nobody predicted that once girls and women caught up with boys and men, that they would keep going and that we would. actually we did predict that in the manosphere in the old school uh, men's rights groups they have been predicting this kind of stuff they've been sounding the alarm on this for years the boy crisis books have been written on this shit this is this is what i hate about the mainstream they act stupid guys they pretend like oh we just woke up one day and like wow dude have you seen how far behind men and boys have fallen Wow, society is super unbalanced and tipped in the favor of women. It's a gynocracy now. Oh my God, how could this happen? We've been talking about that F word for the longest. We've been talking about our boys being demasculized. We've been talking about anything traditionally masculine being demonized in society today. There is no more masculinity. You got dudes, grown ass men. Oh my God, I don't even wanna get in there. Dude will get banned. We would now have a Ugh. bigger gender gap in higher education than we did 50 years ago, just the other way around. There are many males walking around today, guys. Hardly any men. After centuries of men dominating the economy, most of the job growth is in industries where women traditionally work. And those jobs require more education. The latest piece of data is that women are dominating college enrollment. In a few years, two women will earn a degree for every one man. In fairness, many young men are dodging college with good reason. The typical graduate of a four-year university is going to walk into their first job with $26,000 in debt and all too often. And by the way, you would go to college as a man in a hostile environment where you're demonized. And then when you go and apply for a job, you're at the back of the line, especially as a white male. You're at the back of the line because diversity and inclusion and we got to get all super woke and we got 10,000 marginalized groups now so even if you go to college even if you do well somebody has a foot in the door before you simply for what's in between their legs or the color of their skin and how the f is that an even playing field most people don't have hookups connections legacy rich wealth silver spoon shit it's just poor f people trying to get by your family worked their ass off to get you through the door you come from nothing oops women got the job because oh, women are marginalized and we need equity we need equalities of outcome we're not merit-based anymore often that college degree which was supposed to promise a stable middle-class life is falling far short of expectations about a third of the nation's colleges leave students high and dry earning less after obtaining their degree than the typical high school graduate 10 years after graduation. Somewhere around 40% of college grads are underemployed. That means they're working in jobs that do not actually require. And when I was in college, this is what blew my mind and I started seeing it as more and more of a scam unless you're getting a professional degree. I applied it somewhere like Chili's. I'm over here getting a degree in like business economics. Secondary, I'm thinking of becoming a lawyer or a dentist later down the road. My manager at Chili's bro when I'm getting interviewed had an economics degree she was making like 40,000 a month or a month sorry a year with an eco at a four-year economics degree I'm an economics major I'm looking at her like holy shit am I gonna end up at Chili's I'm going to school paying how much a year to potentially end up at Chili's bro to be a shift manager Bruh. you gotta be kidding me I took a hard look at my path and I was like, this ain't it. I'm, I'm, I'm in the trap, bro. I'm going to end up being in a similar position to this person. For what? Thanks, Crayon Love your streams. All these great content. Learn so much from you. Yeah, man, if you're in college today, boys and ladies who's watching the stream and you're looking at people graduating in your class years before you, and if you get to talk to these people and see where they ended up, man, if it doesn't make you depressed, if they all have bright futures, carry on. But if some of them... If a lot of them are telling you, I work in an industry that has nothing to do with what I majored in, better step back a second 
and think about what you're doing and the debt you're accumulating and the message you've been sold because it's horseshit. If you're trying to become a doctor, if you're trying to become a lawyer, trying to be an engineer, and you need to take boards and all this shit and get a professional degree, I understand, dude. For the rest, I don't know if it's worth it. I don't think it's worth it at all, honestly. My life changed when I started my own business and I became my own boss. I dropped out of college to do that. I'll tell that story later of how it happened and what works, but I think that was probably one of the best decisions I've ever made. And it led to <laughs> here we are today, all of this. Had I stuck to what everybody was, to was telling me, going with the grain, being a little NPC bot, staying in nice in school, being a good little boy, getting my grades, getting my economics degree and potentially busting another two to four years, six years for whatever else. Hmm. I could be a little, a little jockey working through some goddamn briefs, 80 hours a week doing a bunch of goddamn nothing. And maybe, maybe 50, 60, I may have my name on the company, Refect Law, some shit like that. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Dildo swag and sinks. I knew someone who was a nuclear engineer, had a degree in everything, but he's working at Waffle House. Holy shit. Don't know how you end up there with a nuclear engineering degree, but yeah. If you haven't already, guys, go to go to Locals, please. That's the best place to support the channel. Get more community podcasts going, everything. Exclusive content. Hire a four-year degree. But the fact remains that adults with a bachelor's degree earn an average of $2.8 million during their careers. 1.2 million more than the median for workers with a high school diploma. Think about how many jobs that have nothing to do with college still require a degree. And from there, that's just the entry point. Media, economics, politics, law, business, almost all professional jobs today require a college degree. It's simply a bare minimum to even get a shot at competing. Ultimately, it all depends on the individual college and student respectively. A declining male presence in higher education suggests that men are on the road to becoming less competitive in the economic sphere than before. And that's bad news for the dating market. Why? Because women are hypergamous, which means that they're biologically wired to select sexual partners who are as competent or more competent than they are. Hypergamy is a good thing, for if our female ancestors had been inclined to have sex with... With betas, we'd all be dead. Beta! beta. <laughs> I work as a structural engineer working in OC. Somebody said they make 300k. Big tech is the way. 300k remote doesn't get better than that. There you go. For somebody uh, on the stream earlier asking how the hell do you get a remote job, big tech, message that guy. ...than reproduce with, men who are unable to defend or acquire resources for them, our species probably would have died out a very long time ago. But see, the thing is, when women become the higher achieving sex in the social order, hypergamy prevents many men and women from finding suitable mates. Because a large pool of women find attraction in only a very small pool of And again, women are only succeeding because they're forced to, because of diversity and inclusion, because quotas, because the narrative is pushing them, because society is artificially forcing them to be successful if you gave everybody equal opportunity if you let people actually make their choices based on merit they would be they would be getting out competed heavily this isn't real i don't think people understand that this isn't equal what we're doing if you let everybody choose and you made society a meritocracy and only the best and the brightest get hired i guarantee you a majority is men Men would dominate all the fields. Men still dominate some of the highest paying fields. Some of the hardest working jobs, some of those, the most stringent requirements, all men still, despite the heavy handedness of legislation to push women through, despite companies essentially bending over backwards to get women to work in those exact fields. What, where, how is that equal in any way? How is this success? If you got handed a job. Of highly promising or successful men. I just want to know why it is so hard to find a guy that I'm attracted to that isn't an asshole. Where did all the good men go? Can someone tell me where I can find a decent, loyal, funny, good-looking guy around here? Left. This reality is playing out Peace on modern out. dating apps like Tinder. Data reveals that men swipe right on about 60% of female profiles, whereas women swipe right on only 4% of male profiles. On account of being scarcely available, these few desirable men are free to set the rules of the dating game. And as the renowned evolutionary psychologist David Buss said in 2015, research overwhelmingly shows that men harbor, on average, a greater desire for sexual partner variety. So what you see, where there is a surplus of women and a scarcity of men, 
is more casual dating because the men get to make the rules. If there are fewer men than there are women, the women have to compete and the only way that they can compete is by playing the game that the men want. This sexual paradigm has long been referred to as hookup culture and it often sees attractive women moving from one short-term relationship to another. Yeah, getting pumped and dumped, literally devaluing yourself. And you become worthless in the eyes of the man you actually really want to settle down with. When you meet a good guy, he's the perfect man for me. I want to marry him. Oh, I'm sorry. I got the body count of Hitler. He doesn't want to settle down. He was looking at me at a piece of meat. I'm trash. I'm less than a human in his eyes. That's not fair. Why are you judging me? By the way, how much do you make? A year? Oh, it's less than six figures? You're a bum. Get out of here. Make this shit make sense. Blue bag and stakes for the 10. Um, I dropped out of college as well, took a sales job. 15 years later, I work for myself, selling software and hardware to companies 100% remote. If you can do sales, you write your own check. Sales is probably one of the most important skills for a man to learn. If you can sell, dude, we live in a, we live in a corporatocracy. We live in a consumerist society. Materialism is rampant. If you can learn to sell shit, you are f golden. Thanks, Lucas. Guys, get off Tinder, unless you're a 5%er. Get after it. Unable to tie down the <laughs> desire to committed, long-term, monogamous relationships. I don't know how I always end up in the exact same situation. It's always great. And I feel like these people I like meet, I'm like, wow, like I'm finally clicking with somebody. And then it's always the same thing. I They're not in a place where they are looking for a relationship. Perfect. They have other things that are more important. Perfect. And I'm just like, like, I'm never good enough. Every single boy I've ever shut dated. Up, damn yeah, I want a relationship. Oh, I'm just looking for the right person. Like, I'm so loyal. Like, I just want a relationship. We have a really good date, and then I just don't hear from them again. Or I do for like a couple of days, and then they ghost. Like, I've seriously fucking had enough. I'm going to be single for the rest of my life. There was a time when if men wanted to have sex, they had to marry you. Whereas now, the price of sex is Netflix and chill. So the standards have changed and we've allowed them to change because we wanted to prove that we could do it just as bad as the boys. And I think that that is backfiring. The result is a quite distorted sexual marketplace. If you have more lax rules, around casual sex before marriage and birth control, which means that you can have sex without fear of having children. That means that women can have sex with high value men who are perhaps higher value than they would usually have access to, which then skews their goals moving forward. God, I just love, I just love how the red pass seeped into the mainstream. Look at them. Look at them just talk about main sh these uh, tenants that we've known for years. And now all of a sudden it's mind blowing information, guys. Oh, fuck, look at the problems we're having. Here's what's going on. All of a sudden it's repackaged and okay to talk about before they would <laughs> immediately demonetize your shit. Immediately call you an incel, call you an extremist, call you a misogynist. Misogyny. Now we're just talking about stats, babe. We're just talking about the reality of the situation. It's not, it's not incels talking about this. This is a problem in dating, guys. Women are actually being lonely now. They have no men. They're acquiring cats. Oh, God. It's no longer misogyny. It's a problem in society. They're not actually incels. Hold on. We have to have this conversation now. It's a problem for women. Now it's an actual problem. About who they want to be in a long-term relationship with. Because when they were sleeping with these really attractive guys, they thought, okay, this person is attracted to me because I'm on his level. Not knowing that men drastically reduce their standards when it comes to casual situations. And if you Live do have love, this experience baby. with this guy and it was a fantastic experience and you're head over heels for him, you want to replicate that experience in the next sort of relationships you have. But if that guy that you're dating doesn't quite reach that standard, you're never going to be happy. Men, on the other hand, are struggling not only to find long-term partners, but even to have sex at all. Sadly, many have become too apathetic and devoid of confidence to even bother trying. I feel like possibly my self-esteem is like so low that I've subconsciously ruled out the possibility of ever like getting a girl. Pause. We just got to talk about this guy. Beta! Listen to me. This is a shit test on a societal level and you can absolutely succeed if you work on yourself and not allow yourself to become this. Look at this guy. Shoulders. No muscle meat here, non-existent. This is a skeleton with skin. You're not taking care of yourself. You're not eating. You're not putting your body through any physical test. You're not gaining any wisdom. You're not learning shit, boy. You're surviving. You're not living life. Look at him. Beta! Beta! 
I hate to be clowning. He's, he's talking about a serious issue, but this is self-imposed problems here. The man hasn't had a protein shake. Feed him a f***ing sandwich, please. This dude hasn't eaten steak, anything. It looks like decades. He is barely alive right now. He needs multivitamins. I'm sorry to clown, but there is a ton of men that could absolutely get into a better position in life, have a better situation, get women, buy a passport, go somewhere, do something, make some money, and improve their situation if they put in effort. There is zero effort today from men and women. Zero. Zero effort. This man put no effort. He came on with a beanie, sideways hair, like it's 1990s and we're listening to Lincoln Park and shit. What are we doing, bro? I hate to be that guy, but at a certain point, you got to shake a mother so he can wake up. Shaggy does not need to be left alone. Shaggy needs to be helped. He needs to be saved right now. So, bruh. Girlfriend or whatever. Generally speaking, the only people who are significantly benefiting from this state of affairs are the limited number of high status men. That top slice of playboys, they're having simultaneous relationships. Yeah, he got infected from the Matrix virus. He's acting exactly as he was taught and indoctrinated to. He's got to be a good little soft, pathetic soy boy. Everybody should be stepping on him. He should never show aggression. He has to be muted in everything he does. Crying is the only thing he's allowed to show emotion for. He's supposed to be depressed. The fire inside that he has, quench it completely. Drown it out. Low T. Don't eat meat. That's bad. Enjoy your bugs, your bug sandwiches. You'll never have a Pagani. You're going to drive a busted down Honda if it works or you're taking the bus for life, living with your mama. That's what they want you to be. They want you to be in the metaverse. The Zuckerberg wants you to be hooked up to tubes, feeding you straight through the saline bags, feeding your ass multivitamins, barely keeping you alive while you're permanently in the metaverse surviving. That's what they want you to become. Chips all back to back. It's great for them in the short term. It's rubbish for the other men, and it's also rubbish for the women because you end up with women who actually really want to have loving, intimate, monogamous relationships, and they don't feel like they can. If other groups are in fact gaining from this condition, it's primarily those in the middle. <laughs> we didn't make that a thing. You got matrixed. Every time we see a simp like that, beta, beta. he got matrixed. <laughs> He's a goddamn battery, except it's the corporation sucking down his life force, keeping his pockets light, his attention fully topped up on some call of duty got matrix bro enjoy that headshot <laughs> joseph rossi bo it's trades or bust for us guys now <laughs> no feminization over here lol forever grateful my pops taught me as, um, as a teen and tons of six-figure jobs as well 100 100 trades is where you need to be in right now unless you go into a stem degree middle and upper classes studies have suggested that hookup culture is in fact predominantly a middle class phenomenon and the further you are up the socio-economic scale the more likely you are to be able to enjoy and you know get something out of the dissolution of sexual norms but the further down the socio-economic scale you go the more likely that is to result in chaotic lives eking out an existence with four kids by four dads and a fly-by-night party. that's the this is the sad part of all this <sighs> we don't talk about the destruction of the family we don't talk about the childhood trauma that's going to be injected into a kid's life, sadly, when he's raised by a feminized man. When he's raised by a beta bob, we're not, we don't talk about that. Beta! beta! See, everybody loses when you make men weak. Not just men. Women lose. Children lose the most. You're going to essentially grow an entire adult that will be forever damaged. A broken seed that can't succeed in the world. Doesn't believe in itself. Has self-esteem issues. Thinks its future is out of its control. And will always repeat that damage cycle and we're just creating and look man you could think of this as a psyop from the government or something if you create this chain of broken homes and broken people you can forever control everybody you can get them to spend money you can get an emotionally broken person to spend money on whatever you want you can get them to depend on the teat of the government you can get them to vote a certain way you can get them to give up power for security and safety you can absolutely control society with a, yeah, hashtag lost generation, a broken generation. That's the goal here. If you're thinking about absolute power and you're at the top and how do you want to clamp down and maintain it, you don't have to jail people. You don't have to kill people. You don't have to exert too much tyranny. You just break everyone. You break everyone at the bottom. You make them dependent. You make them emotionally damaged. You make them hate one another. Look at society today, dude. If we're, in, if we're trying to CIA 
PSYOP right now from the 60s and we're out at a table, guys, in a dark room in some suits and we go, how the f do we control everybody forever? How do we assure nobody ever protests? There's no revolutions, nothing. How do we sedate the world? I know. Let's break the family unit. Okay, good job, Bob. What we got next here? Okay, okay, I got it. And then we'll get them hooked on products. Okay, okay, that's great, that's good. So we're gonna sedate them with material possessions. Okay, what's next? Then we're gonna stagnate wages. And then we're gonna indebt them, make them go to school and absolutely have no jobs for them coming out. That bachelor's degree, worthless. Okay, great. Ted, fucking genius, bro. So now they're broken homes, they're in debt, they have no emotional stability, and we can absolutely control them and make them think that their self-esteem is tied to the shit they own? Oh, Goddamn, Ted. Perfect. You the man. Stamp that shit, boys. PSYOP complete. What do we got now? Look at the world. Genius. Partner who beats up your children when you're not looking. It's not obvious to me that that's somehow intrinsically better than a slightly meh marriage to somebody you stopped fancying after 10 years. As things stand, loneliness and frustration reign in an increasingly atomized world. Our society is cultivating a densely populated underclass of men who are destined to remain penniless and alone their entire lives. And those are the guys who cause problems because they're faced with possibly being zeros in the evolutionary race and so they are willing to take big risks in order to catapult themselves up. Yeah, you notice we're in a combination of a, brain, a brave new world in 1984. Think about it this way, dude. We have internet. We have the we have at this point in time access to the most amount of information humanly possible. You can self-teach anything. It's all available online. How many people read a book? If you go around on the street and ask people the last book they read, the answer is they haven't. Think about this. Think about this, man. We have access to so much information. People can't be bothered to read past a f***ing headline. A headline. People go on Reddit, read the f***ing headline, then go com then go comment. They won't read the article, let alone a f***ing book. You crazy? You can keep people stupid by their behavior alone. Hey, all the information is here. It's not my fault you didn't read it, moron. It's the perfect out, dude. It's a perfect excuse. We're not stopping you. What do you mean? Information is available and abundant to everybody. The system isn't keeping you down. You just didn't pull yourself up by your bootstraps, stupid. It's all there in your face all along. You're too dumb to f do it though. Dude, incredible, huh? Incredible. We gave them, we gave them everything. They just never f pick it up. The status hierarchy and have a chance to get into the marriage and mating market. And beyond the threat of violence is the problem of population collapse. The most gangster shit you could do today is read. You know that? Forget all the shit you see on TV. Forget what social media is telling you. The, th the thing that, sep that could separate you the most from every single f person is sitting down, bro, with a book in your hand and using your attention and focusing and learning shit. That's the one f source that's untainted by ever-changing propaganda. You can pick up a history book. You can pick up how to you can pick up the power of the mind. You can pick up how to make a million dollars, the millionaire fast lane, 1984. You can pick up so many f books. Information is power. Knowledge is power. Or you can read your f Twitter timeline and get propagandized in uh, like microseconds. The moment you open your shit, it's already feeding you down your gullet. Things it thinks you should think about. Oops, got a call from the government, big daddy, some f ABC entity. That just messages social media. Got, hey, take that shit down. Hey, we need you to forge this uh, conversation. Hey, this narrative needs to get pushed. Hey, make sure you delete that tweet. Come on, man. Probably the biggest myth that exists right now is this overpopulation myth, when in fact we have a population collapse problem. Like, people have no idea how fast the population is going to collapse. If fewer people are reproducing, next generation, you have fewer people to reproduce as fewer people are reproducing, yeah. and it... Oof. The lifespan is increasing. That's the only reason why the population of Earth isn't plummeting, but it will plummet. The growth rate in the U.S. has been below replacement. Yeah, so this is damn, the population decline. Pay attention, guys. I, I mentioned this the other day off off, uh, off live stream in that um, eugenics and the conversation around eugenics has actually come up in upper academia, and it's been repro. Uh, reprocessed as, what do they call it? Social engineering. So we're going to talk about Let's see, carbon footprints, overpopulation, climate change, all these under social re-engineering. The real f 
word for that is eugenics. We've already, dude, World War II has not even passed that long ago. It's already back in discussion. Isn't that crazy? Who gets to pick who gets to die? Hmm. Interesting. The rate since like 71 or 72. Japan actually went down by 600,000 people last year. So you're saying people need to be having more kids? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you know a lot of people who have like no kids. Like how many kids do you guys have? I don't I know. I got no kids. I mean, that no, we know none of. None of you guys have any, uh, What the fuck? At the present rate, there'll be a striking absence of the young people necessary to uphold our society in 50 years time. And so, if the mating crisis in our society isn't fixed, it may be a very dark road ahead. Forever alone lifestyle. Hey, you see him? That's the cartoon version of Be Beanie Dude. Look, look, he got a beanie on with the sideways hair. You see what I mean? That's a bug sandwich eater right there. That's your destiny. That's your destiny. You wake up, play video games, go to sleep, dude. That's your life. Look at him. Fuck, dude, I'm so alone. Why does no one want me? <laughs> Live in Z pod. Give me Z energy. You will be happy in pretend world. Living in a modern form of indentured servitude. With the cost of inflation and stagnating wages, you're forever indebted. You're just living paycheck to paycheck. Oh, the fire video.